and knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Uh, when we look at this first writer, this uh, uh, first seal that's open, there are some things that's going to happen. And uh, I believe when this uh, begins to start, it starts the first three and a half years of tribulation. It starts the time when men are going to be pretty much deceived the more. They're going to be delusional. They're going to believe a lie. They're going to see something that resembles the church and looks like what they've read in the Bible or look like what they've heard people preach about the Bible, but yet they'll be deceived. They'll follow this man and he'll promise uh, uh, peace. And let me tell you, when the Bible says when they promise peace, you better watch out. Amen. Matthew chapter number 24 verse 5 says, Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and, now, and shall deceive many. And I'm reminded of one back in the book of Acts named Simeon. He was a sorcerer, the Bible says, in Acts chapter 8. He was one that followed the disciples around, and they watched him. <coughs> they watched, uh, he, he watched the disciples heal people and uh, save people and, and made the lame walk. And after all that was over with, he says, well, well, here's a piece of money. Can I have what you got? And friend, tonight there's still folks in this day and time that believe the Holy Spirit, the power of God, can be bought by money. Amen. There's still people who believe that. I mean, they say it all the time. Preacher, uh, I tell you right now, I put an extra 20 in the offering plate. I'm hoping God's going to bless me uh, this week. God's not going to bless you any more or any less. It is our faithful and duty in the uh, way that we worship by the way we tithe. Amen. Uh oh, preachers don't die tonight. Amen. 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 My Bible tells me that but there was a certain man named Simon, who was before time in the same city, he used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, and giving out that he himself was some great one, to whom they gave heed from least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. They're gonna see when this rider here comes, he's gonna offer peace and Many think because uh, he has so much money and power that people are going to follow him. You know, people normally follow other folks that have money. Amen. 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 You know, Donald Trump can get on TV and talk about how to make money. People be glued to TV. Amen. Why? Because he's got a lot of money. Amen. Amen. They won't count how many wives he's had or how many dumb decisions he's made. But it's because he's got a pocket full of money or his bank account's got money. They'll say, well, he's got to be an educated man or a smart man. Amen. Amen. Or not be judged on what a man has in his check account or his back pocket. Amen. Or be judged on how he serves God and follows God. Amen. 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 Notice the Bible tells us that this man's going to come on a white horse. He's going to have a bow, but the Bible says just a bow and has no arrows. So what's he going to do with his bow? You know, I've worked with some folks before that talk like they can do anything in this world and they can do it perfect. Amen. I mean, they're good talkers. Amen. <laughs> kind of like my wife told me one time. Don't tell me you love me, you show me. Amen. You love me. Amen. 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 It's like one trying to preach that ain't even read the Bible or one trying to preach my friend, it ain't never lived a life or been saved. You gotta be able to have a shirt from where you've been from. Amen. 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 Proof's in the pudding. Amen. You know, I ate some banana pudding one time, didn't have no bananas in it. <laughs> Belinda's laughing. Hint, hint. Come on, right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no banana, banana pudding. If you think about that, awesome. This white horse rider is going to have a bow with no arrows. He's not going to, I, I, I can't prove it, but I don't think he's going to uh, take over this world or, or lead this world by, uh, by just uh, pulling his arrows out and causing bloodshed. I think that he's going to be a wizard with his lips. He's going to deceive many. I believe this is the Antichrist that is coming to this earth that's going to uh, brainwash many people inside of this world today. People are looking for something. Do you know that? Amen. They're looking for something. 
But the problem is they're looking in all the wrong places. Amen. They want peace, but they'll never find it when they give the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They want the world off their shoulders and they've tried everything under the sun. I've watched people drink gallons of whiskey wine to get the pressure of this world off of them. They smoke dope, they take pills to get the pressure of this world off of them. Amen. Jesus can give you that. Amen. The preacher of Jesus is going to fix all my problems. Yes, he'll fix your worst problem right strong. Amen. Your worst problem is you. Amen. My worst problem was me. Amen. Still is sometimes. Amen. Amen. The Bible says he was riding a white horse. He had a bow. and You know, the world's patterns we've seen uh, we're all programmed already to accept things and doctrines that uh, we used to wouldn't accept. Amen. This is what I'm saying when I say that. You know, the church would have probably burnt down the schoolhouse a hundred years ago if they were teaching evolution a hundred years ago. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, the church would have went down there and the preacher, the violated teacher started talking about evolution. They'd have had him by the hair of the head or her by the hair of the head and they'd have had him strung up and said, you'll never teach that again or you'll die today. Amen. Amen. That's what you do to devils, by the way. Amen. 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 Old Amen. Preacher, preach and kill somebody. No. But a hundred years ago, that's what would have happened. Amen. Would have tolerated it, but we've been programmed and trained 20 years ago. Amen. They were told in the military you don't ask and you don't tell. Amen. Amen. Now it's if you tell somebody you get a national news media to come by and film you while you give your little testimony on TV about how it's good to be gay or lesbian. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't have tolerated that 20 years ago. Amen. Amen. You say, preacher, you hate gays and lesbians. No, I love them. I don't want them to die and go to hell. Amen. They're just as bad as a fornicator, a adulterer, and a liar. Amen. 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 Just as bad. Amen. You know, ethics and morals have took over. You know, here's another thing that's kind of took over. And, uh, this one world government deal, trying to bring everyone together. Amen. You know, I believe we left Europe because we wanted to be a free country. Amen. That's pretty simple to me. I mean, for a Halls Run raised Dixon High School educated young man, that is simple. Amen. We left there so we could be free, serve the God of this Bible, Amen. worship Him the way He wants to be worshiped. And they want to put us all back together and say, tolerate and get along when those ones we should tolerate and get along with. Are the ones that have cut our heads off if we don't believe the way they believe? Amen. 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 Now, another thing that's been programmed in our head by word wizards, by those that have excellent speech, this sexual perversion thing. Sexual perversion. How many of you have cell phones here tonight? Amen. Hold one of them up. Let me see them. There's one there, one there. All right, all right. On there. A lot of smart, I see smartphones here. They're dumb. Amen. You know, you can text anybody in here while I'm preaching, and you can do text you back, and you can have a conversation. I listen to the thing I say. Amen. 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 We got one video right there. We're going to put this on the internet tomorrow, <laughs> next week. Hey, man. Amen. Do you know, also, you can sit right inside church. If there's a Wi Fi or you have a hotspot, or if you're you're getting good signals. You can get porn right here inside the church. Watch it during service. Amen. 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 Preacher, that's disgusting. No disgusting to me walking outside one Sunday morning when there's ladies' undergarments I'm peeking up off the ground. Amen. Amen. Same way I picked that bug up all the way, too. Amen. <laughs> Glad he got away. Glad he got away. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But it's it's been it's been tolerated. It's been pushed over into our in, in our world. Amen. I mean, it's it's been pounded in our brain. It's kind of like I told you that movie theater the other day. They told me over and over it was cheap, and it just to my common sense, adding up, it wasn't cheap. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
But it, we're going to save these tires are cheap from now on. Amen. We're going to charge double for them. Amen. 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 He's going to have a bow. I believe he's going to have uh, be a word wizard. He's going to make people follow his damnable doctrine. He's going to brainwash them. He's going to be the Antichrist. One that rides a white horse looks just like Jesus. He's going to promise everything. He's going to be all right. He's going to promise peace. Amen. You know, the Bible says he's going to be given a crown. They'll be so brainwashed, they'll say, oh, you be our king. You be the one to lead us. Amen. You've got a pocket full of money. Everything you say sounds good. And I believe it's right. Here's your crown. Be our king. Amen. 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 He also, the Bible says, he's going to come conquer. He'll take the world. He'll be the last, I'll say, natural man to ever try to bring peace to this world. He'll, you know, the world will be fooled by him. The Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail with a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. I believe this false peace will last about three and a half years. I don't believe this rider upon this white horse is Jesus. And you know, first, because he has one crown, and the Lord Jesus has many crowns to die to him. Those that upon his head for many wonderful things that he has done. And you know, and also he's gonna have a weapon that uh don't work. A bow with no arrow that don't work. Amen. Notice there's another seal that's gonna be broken in verse number three of our text. The Bible says, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that set on uh, thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given <laughs> unto him a great sword. When we begin to look at that one, the first color, it would be red. It reminds me of fire and bloodshed, and fire destroys everything it gets a hold of. We've seen that on TV last night as places were burned down and you know bloodshed is a, a natural thing that goes on this day and i mean there's wars and rumors of war and uh, things going on here and things going on there that uh, we just can't explain i mean i don't understand why people want to burn down the auto zone because somebody got shot uh, in a fight with a policeman Amen. i can't understand that i don't um, the Bible tells us though in Matthew chapter 24 and ye shall hear of rumor, wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet nation shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes and diverse places you know I believe old Russia is going to ease down on Israel probably going to bring China with them they're going to try to take over and take away some things that God has promised. Not them, of course. The Bible tells us in Romans 3, it says, and as it is written, <coughs> there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They have all gone out of the way, they have together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of their ass for under their lips whose mouth are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are sweet, are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. Can you imagine a world without peace? Could you imagine laying in your bed at night, and even with the alarm system you have on it, you still don't feel like you've got safety and peace? There will be no rest. Amen. This red rider that comes upon this horse I don't believe these actual these are actual horses that's gonna be rude. I believe they're symbolic of what the Antichrist is gonna to do to this world after the church is gone. Yeah. I mean he's gonna be deceiving everybody. He's gonna be making them believe a lie and he's gonna be promising peace and there's gonna be some that say no way. And they're fighting against the ones that that are brainwashed. They're saying he's not gonna lead us and they're fighting and bloodshed's going on and where they promise peace, there's never peace. And all of a sudden, then, after this red horse flies off the scene, there's a black horse that comes. The Bible says, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. Notice this beast always says, come and see. God's uh, beings and God's uh, preachers and teachers always say, come and see. 
Come and see what God is doing. Amen. Notice he says, come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, verse 5. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now notice this black meaning mourning, sorrow, and famine. The Bible says in Lamentations 4 that they had that they be slain with a sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. I believe when this black horse comes symbolic of what the Antichrist is doing, there's going to be people starving to death. Amen. Starving. Preacher, we got plenty of food over here. That's why we're filling 300 and some shoe boxes, 400 and some shoe boxes up because they're starving somewhere else and not here. Amen. Amen. We throw away enough food a day to feed a whole family, probably, each one of us. Amen. If you think about that. Yeah. You know, uh, the aftermath of war always brings a famine. I mean, when things are too all to pieces, just think, I mean, let's think of it in our way of thinking. If war broke out in Jacksonville and destroyed every place we eat and every place we go grocery shopping, what would a lot of us do? Amen. Hey Amen. What would we do? I mean, some of us that knew how to fish, we could be <laughs> set, and some of us that could do a little hunting could make it. But what would we do? Those that couldn't. Amen. Think about it. It also says there'll be some balancing. They'll be rationing out food, and the Bible says a measure pretty much take a day's wage to feed one person. Imagine working all day just to get something to eat. Amen. I just wouldn't work for that preacher. <laughs> when the Antichrist comes, there'll be a lot going on that people says they never would do. They're going to have to do. Amen. Imagine all the Christian people gone. He'll explain how it happened. It was a UFO Amen. over in Arizona. Amen. Amen. I mean, they're going to believe a lie. Then he's going to explain. He's going to tell them how much peace he's going to bring. And he won't let you see the news clips of them fighting and warring with one another so he can have peace. Yeah. And then this next seal will be cracked with this black horse rider symbolic of famine coming across this land. And people are starving to death. But yet you'll not see that. People won't see that. They'll just see how great he is. And how much he's doing. How much they want him to bring peace and feed them. And the Bible also tells us a lot of the poor starve, the wealthy are going to enjoy plenty. Notice what it says. And I heard a voice, verse 6, in the midst of the four beasts saying, a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou not hurt the wine or the oil, oil and the wine. You know, people that had oil and wine were just rich people. Amen. People of wealth. <coughs> Those with money are going to be all clubbed up together and they'll be in their, like the Democrats say, their top 1%. And they won't be hurt. But yet the poor shall become poorer and the middle class shall be stomped down Amen. to beg food. You know, we I said we waste more food than uh, many people eat today. And you know something else, uh, our grain reserves are probably the lowest they've ever been uh, in, a, in, the, in, in time. And uh, one of the, there's four countries that produce more than they consume each year, America being one of them. Uh, Canada being the next, France and Argentina being the fourth. And can you imagine uh, how the population grows each and every year? I mean, we're what, what about what, seven billion people now? And it has grown, I mean, leaps and bounds of uh, people being born and raised in this world we live in. And someday we're going to run out of food. Amen. Preacher, you're <clears throat> preaching doom and despair. This is what the Bible says. Amen. Praise God in chapter 4, verse 1, the church is gone. Amen. Amen. I mean, this is common sense stuff. They say the ozone layers go into depleting. Don't spray your hairspray. 
All the ladies said, I'm spraying my hairspray. Hmm. You know, they, they took R12 out and got R134, 134A now in place of it. That's your air conditioner Freon that you use and keep yourself cool. But you know what one of the things that deplete the ozone layer from anything that nobody can stop? Volcanic eruptions. I, I looked that up on the internet. Amen. <laughs> See, I can do it too. Amen. Well, that's what the intercept said. And all of a sudden, I was in a commercial that said bonjour at the end of it. Y'all get that? You know, and I say third world countries, but I'm talking about China and places. They're aborting children. You know why? Population control. Amen. You know who they're mainly aborting? Little girls. Amen. Amen. You know, North Korea and places like that are killing innocent children because there's probably not enough to eat. And they don't think they'll be productive to society. And they kill the little girls they can't produce anymore. Amen. Amen. Um, one of the things that's hurting us, and I mean, we, we all have to agree on this. I mean, it's coming, it's coming. This black horse is coming. Amen. You know, farmland is depleting. I mean, my granddad used to have a field that they cropped the backer on and had watermelons and a bunch of stuff. Mama and Belinda told me all about I never cropped a leaf. But now there's apartments over there. Amen. Amen. Yeah. There was a field inside town. I remember where they used to have a great big farm. You know what there now is a Walmart. Great big parking lot. Amen. Amen. There's a Lowe's there. Amen. I mean, it's, you say, well, I used to live in the country, but now I'm living in the suburbs and, the, and part of the city and I'm being annexed inside of it. I'm having to pay more taxes. Amen. One day, one day, won't be much farmland, will there? Nope. Amen. How are we going to eat what we grow and grow what we eat? Amen. These are things to think about. I mean, praise God, we'll be gone. But then there's another seal that's going to be broken. It's in chapter uh, 6, verse 7. It says, And when they had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. He says, Come and see again. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, his name that sat on him was death and hell, followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword. The fourth part of the earth. And with hunger, and with death, and with beast of the earth. We read those, and you say, Preacher, pale horse. What's meaning a, a greenish tent horse, the cover, I'll say, of a decaying or dying person, a sick person. Death is the rider, and hell, the Bible says, is following one-fourth of the world's population is going to be destroyed. The first, by violence, he'll be using a sword. That's what it says. He'll have a sword. Something will be going on with a sword. They'll be killing that way. They'll be starving to death by hunger. And then the next one, he said death. And you know, one of the things that uh, has just come on our scene is Ebola in America. Amen. We've had a handful of cases. Uh, some have died, some have lived because of great medical institutions we have. But over in South Africa, they don't have a chance. Amen. You got Ebola, you're dying, check. <coughs> Over in South Africa, they are having another disease that runs crazy. It's called AIDS. You don't hear much about AIDS no more, do you? Magic Johnson got it, HIV, and they gave him drugs, and he's cured. And no, he's not cured. He's in remission. He stopped taking the drugs. He can produce the virus that'll kill him. Amen. Amen. I looked it up on the internet. <laughs> Hey man, you can't do. You can't do. It seems to me like they would send safe sex items over there rather than cures. 
Because they say it's spreading by the hundreds. They say in India, 96% of the prostitutes have AIDS, infecting 500 people a day. Statistic I got off the internet. That's a lot, isn't it? Amen. Multiply that. This is a pale horse rider. Quarter of the earth. Now, the church is gone. Then a quarter of this world population is gone because of they're fighting with war. I mean, not only are they fighting with war, they're becoming sick. Not only are they coming sick, they're having a good time and diseases are spreading. Preacher, I just don't see how diseases can travel so fast. They get on an airplane in South Africa, they land in Kansas City. They buy 20 hours later. It's pretty quick. Amen. Urbanization. Things traveling everywhere. You know, airplane travel and, you know, we need to just wash our hands and go to the bathroom. Amen. Amen. I've often said this behind the pulpit. If we worry about sanitizing our hearts by confessing our sins to the Lord Jesus as much as we worry about sanitizing our hands, we would be repented of. Amen. 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 I mean, if every time we sin and we run somewhere and wash our old dirty heart and do some confessing to the Lord Jesus, we'd be better off. Amen. You know, this last one, I know y'all don't like this, but it's in the Bible I'm preaching. It says that they're going to kill them with hunger, kill them with death, and the, with beasts of the earth. A quarter of the population is going to be gone by those four things. Hunger, sword, death, and beast of the earth. Behind the world of beast of the earth going to kill, help kill. Well, it's thought that many rats take carry many diseases. And with wars going on and things burning down, I'm sure a lot of the Baptist hospital workers are going to be gone in the rapture. I'm sure sanitation grades aren't going to be as they are today in my mind. But having said that, I'll go a little further and say this. If we're starving, the population is starving, the animals will be too. I would go swimming out there at North Topsail Beach if there were sharks starving. Amen. I wouldn't go hunting in the woods without a 30 out 6 and it's fully loaded. Because I bet the bear is going to be hungry. Amen. We now see animals and they run from them, most of us. Very few are domesticated that actually come to us. But when they're hungry, I bet you it'd be different. Amen. Amen. Notice what the Bible says, and we're closed. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, his name that set on him was death, and hell followed him. He had power, was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Preacher, what are you saying? If you're not saved tonight, and tribulation starts tomorrow, <coughs> be ready for this. This is the beginning of tribulation. Amen. There's no need for you to have to go through it. Jesus Christ has died for your sin, rose the third day, buried in the tomb, and has ascended to the right hand of God. And he's going to be the one popping these seals with this scroll. Amen. 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 And those that are saved are going to be saying, worthy, worthy, worthy. Holy, holy, holy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. My God, my Savior, he's worthy. Lord, we've prayed for so long. Take back this earth that you made perfect. Make it perfect again. We prayed for so long, and God says, I'm going to answer their prayer. Amen. I'm going to answer their prayer. Amen. If you're lost tonight, don't leave. If you're backslidden on God, don't leave without first getting right with him. May we all stand.